Welcome back to Fox Files on the Hill live this Sunday morning. You know, former President Donald Trump's historic trial and in its very first week, the prosecution calling witnesses to try to prove that Trump had falsified business records to cover up hush money payments to adult film actress Stormy Daniels. Trump says he's innocent and that the case, he says, is motivated by politics. Josh Gerstein is following this very closely. He is the senior legal affairs reporter with uh, Politico. Josh, thanks for, for being with us. So, you know, obviously people have seen these scenes of Trump in the hallway at the end of the day. But what's been going on in the courtroom this week? How compelling of a case have prosecutors been laying out here? Well, prosecutors, Tom, have started, you know, putting together the building blocks of their case. Most of this week's testimony uh, came from David Pecker, who is the former head of uh, the company that ran the National Enquirer, uh, detailed not the Stormy Daniels case people may be more familiar with, but a case involving another woman named Karen McDougal that uh, that that company, National Enquirer, engaged in a what they call a catch and kill scheme, where they basically bought her story in order to take it off the market. Uh, you know, I, I think in the end, the the facts in this case are not going to be heavily uh, disputed. It's probably going to come down to how those facts are inter interpreted, and uh, you know whether people really believe that. Uh, former President Trump, who, who was then a candidate in 2016, you know, was fully looped in on all of the uh, payments that were taking place in this hush money case. Josh, a lot of Trump followers have been kind of dismissing this. And, you know, there's the, the key question to them as to why is any of this a crime? Donald Trump may not or may have been the first person to maybe want to cover up some damaging personal information in his background, though. But why is falsifying a business record a federal crime or a state crime in this case? Well, it's kind of a complicated case in that they're trying to stack these state charges on top of uh, allegations of efforts to commit either a federal crime or a state crime. That's what enhances a false business records case, which is a misdemeanor up to a felony if you're trying to do it to commit another crime. I think there are some real questions about the legal underpinnings of this case, but the way the system works up there in New York, those uh, issues are really not going to be resolved until an appeal. An appeal obviously would come during the time of the November election or thereafter. And so we won't have those questions really ironed out until months down the road. Whatever the political damage may be here uh, to President Trump and his current presidential campaign will probably have already been incurred by the time the courts sort those issues out. What's Trump's demeanor been like in the courtroom? Because we're hearing these reports that he's you know, flat out falling asleep during portions of this. Right. He seems to have been using body language to signal his uh, discomfort and his uh, unpleasantness about having to be there in the courtroom at all. Uh, people have described him as being kind of slumped back from time to time, uh, occasionally falling asleep during the more boring portions of the jury selection process. And so uh, his demeanor is uh, definitely of someone that doesn't feel he should be having to spend four days a week in a courtroom when he's trying to uh, mount a campaign to return to the White House. The result of spending this time in the courtroom in New York City has been that Trump wasn't able to attend the Supreme Court hearings on his claim of presidential immunity this week. He also hasn't been able to be on the campaign trail. So how damaging has this been to, you know, the Republican campaign here if you can't get your presumptive nominee out on the stump talking to possible voters as you're heading into a presidential election? I think, it, you know, it's definitely been a problem. And of course, if there are more trial or trials that follow this one, it'll be an even more uh, severe problem. What the Trump campaign and the former president have tried to do is simply make lemonade out of these lemons that he's been handed. You know, he's out there regularly describing himself uh, as a martyr in this case, as someone who's being uh, persecuted rather than prosecuted. And so that's the message that he's taking out there. It definitely resonates with an element of his base. Of course, in order to win the White House, he's going to need more than that. And there are some polls, Tom, that suggest that if he's convicted in this New York case, even though a lot of people don't view it that seriously, some portion of the electorate b believes that he would not deserve to be president if he's convicted of, a, of what they call a serious crime. It's just a little hard to poll these things uh, before they happen to make a prediction about how voters will react to something that hasn't happened yet. And, you know, whether you like Donald Trump or whether you don't, there's just a basic logistical problem here if you're trying to run a presidential campaign and your candidate is tied up in a courtroom all the time. How long do we think this trial's going to go, Josh? 
I mean, it could go for an additional five or six weeks. Of course, impossible to know how long jury deliberations might take. Uh, there is one uh, small uh, item here that is in Trump's favor, which is the judge has scheduled a down day every Wednesday during mm -hmm. the trial to deal with other court business unrelated to this case. And so Trump has been lining up his campaign events both on the weekends and on that down day of Wednesday so that he can keep the sort of fervor of having some of these public rallies that he really likes uh, going, even when he is physically stuck right. in that courtroom most of the time. Certainly fills up the candidate uh, ca calendar when you're trying to conduct a campaign and held these legal cases as well, too. Josh Gerstein, senior legal affairs reporter with Political, joining us live this morning. Josh, thank you. That's going to do it for this Sunday's On the Hill. We want to thank you for spending part of your Sunday with us here. I want to remind you, coming up at the top of the hour, it's Fox News Sunday with Shannon Bream. Our guests include Republican Senator from Ohio, J.D. Vance, and Democratic Senator Chris Murphy from Connecticut. We thank you so much for being here with us. We'll see you back here next Sunday on The Hill.